Hi, welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Mothership and I wanted to start this painting journey with you. I started last year painting, uh, believe it or not. I wanted to always paint, but my whole life I thought I couldn't paint. I told myself that I would be horrible at it. But last year during COVID, I tried it and it came out much, much better than I thought. It just was so natural to me. I felt like I needed to do this. I decided to record my process of painting because it's so new to me and it's so fascinating to me. To me, it's like color by numbers. Whatever I see in front of me is how I mix the colors. Um, so I use only primary colors, red, yellow, blue, white, and black, and burnt umber brown. And sometimes a purple. Purples are pretty hard to get vibrant. Think of it more like a sculpture, a crude sculpture, where you're, you're just putting in the shape. So this is the ugly part. This is the part that scares most artists, especially ones that are starting out. It's always scary to me because it looks like I'm failing, but you have to trust the process. If you see a color that seems in the shadow, that seems maybe cool, like green or gray, uh, do put the yellow and blue in there, a very small amount. Put it on the canvas and if it's too dark add white if it's too light add a little bit of black or even brown and as you can tell i'm just slowly and surely adding the layers so this is oil paint water soluble oil paint it's very easy to use but you have to understand it stays wet for a few days so right now you can't really add detail if you do you will get frustrated so just start just learning how to see where's the shadows more as shapes versus detail. I made many mistakes going straight to the detail and you really got to build up this, you got to build up the layer so that it looks realistic or it looks more interesting than just going straight into detail. When you look at hair or fur, has so many textures in it, so many values, so many different tones. This is white fur, by the way. And the white fur has lots of grays and browns and greens in there. Um, even a little bit of purplish. Just slowly work your way into it. And, and oil is very forgiving. If you make a mistake, if you just go over it again with another color. So I'm blocking in the white areas, the light areas where the light is hitting the subject. The reference photo really helps here because it's good to really learn how the light hits a subject. For example, this dog, um, it, it's looking up, the light is hitting the face, a little bit of the chest, but it's coming from an upward upper direction so that its body is blocking the light from hitting uh, the right leg most of the right leg um, you see the shadow is in a bit of an angle here and from imagination I wouldn't have noticed it so a reference really really helps the right leg is in shadow but the little toes that's stepping out of that shadow is light and that really helps with the realism of that piece. You will start noticing all these little gems here and there from observation and hopefully from practice. And I hope too, maybe in the future that I will remember this and be able to maybe create a painting from my memory. And so I'm practicing more and more on just painting every day because we do not have the time to have a concept and paint something huge every day, but it's super important that you practice every day. 
So I started doing these little tiny 11 by 14 canvases. So right now here, as you can see, now I'm finally working on the face, on the detail, and that's pretty much my favorite thing is the facial expression. And the I noticed the ratio of the distance between the eyes and to the nose is very important. And you can use the back of a ruler or even the, the stem of the paintbrush and look on your reference photo, measure the distance between the eyes and then put that distance between the eyes and the nose, is that the same distance or is that one and a half distance? Start measuring and then you can go to your canvas and see is that the same distance or one and a half just to match the reference photo. The ratio of the eyes and the nose really have uh, something to do with the likeness to create better likeness and to create that expression. So it's very, very important. Okay, so now um, I'm laying down the you know, the block blocking in the nose and I realize, oh, okay, there's some dark spots that I need to fill in here. And I mean, it's still blocking in. Um, it's not at the detail level yet, but just adding the darkness of darks. So as you notice that I am working mostly from the middle range. And then as I go layers, I either go really, you know, lighter and lighter or darker and darker. That's the best type of technique that I've learned because the middle range creates the middle depth that you have and then you're fine tuning it kind of like carving out a sculpture here. Now as you can see I'm putting more darks as well. Just see with your eyes just learn how to see you know what's the value. Value is you know, how light is it? How dark is it? The little hairs that's uh, flowing over the nose, little details. You're using a small brush for this one. And then I just decided to make the background a little bit more saturated, so I did that off camera and then I'm back now with a smaller smaller brush almost like a liner brush and I'm putting in all the details of the hair around the nose and that you know and, and the mouth you've already laid all the foundation now blocking everything in now it's for the fun part this is the part that I really love and it's the short part we're already at the end of the stretch you're putting all your hard work and so this is the fun part and as you notice I have two brushes the liner brush and, a, and another brush that is supposed to be clean so that I could kind of blend as I go. When I put in a line, if it's too harsh, I'll blend it out. Okay, so um, as I'm adding the white, I notice, okay, so I didn't really pay that much attention to the feet. And the left feet is too small. So I'm supposed to put in the shadow there, so I decide to kind of carve it out again and kind of measure where the feet is supposed to be. And remember the oil paint is always, you know, pliable. You can always work it. So at this point, you know you're almost finished. This is a time to assess the proportions. If there's any mistakes happening, don't be afraid to, you know, start over on a piece or on a piece of, on a section. Because, you know, the, if there's a mistake that you leave because you're too lazy to kind of take a look at it, it will haunt you for the rest of your life as it's hanging on your wall. You don't want to do that. This is a time to assess. Most artists do this. So it's perfectly fine as part of the process. Take a look, re-measure, and then voila. You know, um, I'm measuring there again. It's I think it's a little too long. It was too short, now it's too long. But you know, again, you can use your shadow color to kind of carve it in, and you'll get you'll get where it, when it looks right. You have to tr kind of trust yourself on this. But you know, painting is always a risk. So the better it will be if you take that risk. So now I'm just trying to make it pop a little bit more, adding a little bit darker shadow, 
just working on the shadow just a little bit just blending it in um, now that I've reworked the leg I want to make sure that the shadow is working with it making it pop a little bit the leg I want to make sure that the shadow is working with it making it pop a little bit and um, shaping the paw then I'm noticing you know the edge of the shadow needs to be blended out just a little bit more you know what sometimes when you're too close it just seems awkward and weird so sometimes just step back a little and see where the shadow is and I notice okay the shadow is at an angle and next to the the background it's a bit too contrasty so I'm blending it out that paw really gave me some issues there but this painting overall gave me the least amount of issues that I've ever had usually I have to rework uh, part of the anatomy about 500 times but this time it was just a little bit this this painting has was pretty fun for me it's super fast so this painting took me about I think less than two hours overall I took I do 30 minute spurts of painting and I walk away but um, overall I think together it's only it was only two hours which is pretty fun I the last painting that I did was pretty big and it took me about six months to do um, it was more conceptual I had to really figure out the symbolism and all that and it took a lot of work so sometimes it's really good you know to take a break between the big pieces that takes a lot of thought and just do something fun just work on technique make sure you're practicing painting almost every day it's a discipline you know um, and the more that you work on this discipline the more freer you can be because you already know what to do and you have less fear uh, painting is definitely a process on getting over your fear of failure there are so many wrong turns I could have took I mean look you know the paw took a while it just if, if it stayed the way it was then it would have ruined the painting for me another thing that I realized was you know the face is really in focus and so I wanted to make the body a little bit less focused. We want to have a bit of a focal point here. Um, if everything is, I mean, it just depends on what you want to do. Um, I'm working on creating focal points and maybe having a little bit more design in my paintings. But at last, voila, it's finished. I'll go in for a little bit more detail. So there you go. There's the finished piece. Thank you for joining me. Please like and subscribe.